Okay, the next section about uh, text similarity is going to be on semantic similarity. We are going to look at uh, synonymy and other sem semantic relations. I showed you this example in the introduction. There were three different announcements about the stock market and they all used different words and yet they meant more or less the same. So climbed, gained and rose uh, mean pretty much the same in the context of a stock index going up or down. And then on the right hand side, we also looked at paraphrases, which are its best close for its best showing and its highest levels. Now the difference between the left column and the right column is that in the left one we have synonyms and the second case we have paraphrases. So what are synonyms? Uh, this is something that you may have studied in high school. Uh, synonyms are different words and sometimes word compounds that can have similar meanings. For example, the adjectives tepid and lukewarm have very similar meanings because they can be substituted for one another in many different contexts. For example, the water was tepid versus the water was lukewarm. They're not exactly the same. There are cases where you want to use one and not the other, but for practical purposes, they can be substituted in most contexts. I mentioned earlier an example where big and large can be synonyms in many contexts, but not in all contexts. For example, there's a major difference between the big leagues and large leagues. Uh, big leagues is an actual concept, whereas large leagues is not used. Uh, the verbs to sweat and to perspire are also near synonyms, uh, but they differ in different things. For example, in the frequency of use and the context in which they appear. Another property of words is polysemy. So polysemy is the property for words to have multiple senses. Uh, this is what you typically see in a dictionary. If you open a dictionary and you look at uh, the definitions of the word book, you will see that it can refer to many different things. It can be a literary work. For example, Anna Karenina by Tolstoy, that's a literary work. It can be a stack of pages which may or may not be blank. For example, a notebook. It can be a record of business transactions, uh, think as a bookkeeper. You know, a bookkeeper is a person who keeps uh, track of accounts in books. It can be a record of bets, uh, so a bookmaker is a person who takes bets. And it can also be a list of buy and sell orders in some financial market. So if you want to buy or sell a certain stock, there is a list of orders and uh, the whole list is called the book. There are other senses of book that I'm not going to mention here. So the same word can also have multiple parts of speech and each of those can have its own set of senses. For example, the word book as a verb now can mean to make a reservation for or to occupy. Now the different senses of the same word don't have to be equally frequent. So uh, the sense, for example, of the word S-E-E -E as to watch something, to observe something is very frequent. But the sense of S-E-E -E as the Holy See where holy spelled H-O-L-Y and C is spelled S-E-E, -E, is only used in a very specific context, specifically uh, the Vatican. The Holy See is a special name for the Vatican. Uh, some of the senses of a word may overlap. For example, the first two senses of book in the previous slide, remember one was literary work and one was a stack of pages. So when we talk about a book, we may say, bring me the book from the shelf. We are really talking about the stack of pages, but we can also be thinking about the work of, of literature instead. That's why uh, different dictionaries have different sets of word senses for the same word. In some cases there may be a difference between the two senses of a word like title and in other dictionaries they may be conflated. So a little joke here, uh, somebody said my favorite books are Anna Karenina and my father's checkbook. So you see in this case we have two very different kinds of books that are lumped together. Now, some words can be very highly polysemous. According to WordNet, which we're going to discuss in the next few slides, the verb get has at least 35 different meanings. Many other words in English have many meanings. For example, words like draw or put have also dozens of meanings. There are other semantic relationships that uh, are interesting to natural language processing. For example, antonymy. Antonymy or uh, antonyms means near opposites. So for example, the word raise, as in raise the bar, is an antonym of lower, as in lower the bar. Another semantic relationship is hypernymy. Hypernym is a more general concept than another. So for example, a deer is a more general concept than an elk. 
Hyponymy is the opposite of hypernymy. In that case, we have a word that is a more specific instance of another word. So an elk is a hyponym for deer. And then one more concept is meronymy. There are two kinds of meronymy, a membership meronymy and part meronymy. Uh, membership meronymy refers to words like flock, which includes uh, a bunch of sheep or possibly a bunch of birds. That's an example of membership meronymy. And part meronymy refers to the relationship between a table and its legs, because a table includes or has legs. Semantic relations hold between word senses and not between words. For example, the antonym of the word hot can be either mild, if hot is used in the sense of spicy, or cold, if hot is used in the sense of uh, warm, or it can be even unattractive if hot is used in the sense of attractive. So, depending on the sense of hot, we may have different antonyms. Another example is the following. The immediate hypernym of bar can be one of many. Among others, it can be room, musical notation, obstruction, profession, and so on, depending on the sense of bar. As a result, uh, people in the community use the term synset to group together all the synonyms of the same word. If a word is polysemous, it may be associated with multiple synsets. So this takes us to WordNet. WordNet is a special uh, database of lexical relationships between words in English that was created at uh, Princeton University over the years. Uh, it was started by George Miller, uh, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, and this project is now run by Christiana Fellbaum, still at Princeton University. It includes a large database of words in English, mainly nouns and verbs, but also a trivial number of adjectives and adverbs. And it also includes the semantic relationships between them. The main relation in WordNet is hypernymy. So the overall structure of the database is more tree-like. Uh, the next slide will show you an example of a small subsection of the WordNet tree. Now, uh, WordNet is one of the most valuable resources in natural language processing, and I would like to encourage everybody to look at uh, the two references that are listed here. One is a collection of papers uh, by, edited by Christiana Fellbaum, and one is an introductory article about WordNet by George Miller himself in the communications of the ACM about 20 years ago. So uh, in this example, I'm going to show you uh, a small subtree of WordNet that matches uh, the relationship between different animals. Uh, so, uh, you can see that the word ungulate is shown on top. Ungulates are divided into even-toed ungulates and odd-toed ungulates. Un odd-toed ungulates include equines and others. I'm only showing you equines here. Equines are mostly horses, but other related animals also belong here, such as mules and zebras. And then I also have an example of an object that is more specific than a horse, in this case, pony. On the left-hand side, we have okapis, deer, and giraffes that are all examples of ruminants, and elk, wapiti, and caribou, which are all examples of deer. So just to remind you, a deer is a hypernym for caribou, and caribou is a hyponym for deer. Let's look at some examples of WordNet. The word bar in WordNet has 11 senses. They are not sorted in any particular way. Uh, but often the first few are the most frequent senses. So bar room, bar saloon, gin mill, tap room are all words in the same sense set as bar in the sense of a room where alcoholic drinks are served over a counter. The second sense of bar is the actual counter where you can purchase food or drink. The third sense is a rigid piece of metal, for example, an iron bar. The fourth sense is uh, measure and music, so its uh, definition is a notation for a repeating pattern of musical beats, written followed by a vertical bar, and so on. There are many other senses of bar. Now, the verb bar, as opposed to the noun bar, also has four senses. Let's just look at one or two of them. The first one is uh, to bar, to exclude, as in he was barred for membership in the club. The second sense is the same as barricade, block, blockade, block off, block up. It means to render something unsuitable for passage, so to barricade the streets or to bar the streets. In the first sense of bar, its closest the hypernym is room. Then the hypernym of room is area. The hypernym of area is a structure or construction. 
then artifact, then object, and then entity. So entity is one of the root categories in the uh, WordNet hierarchy. I should say that WordNet is not really a tree. I misspoke earlier. It's more like a forest because it has multiple roots. Entity or something is one of them. I will show you some others later. In the second sense of bar, a bar is a hyponym of counter, which is a hyponym of a table, a piece of furniture, and so on. And it all goes back to entity or something. So it goes back to the same uh, root node. And let's briefly look at some of the other in interpretations of bar. So a bar is an implement. An implement is a type of instrumentation. An instrumentation is a type of artifact. And now we go back to entity. Now, in the fourth sense, uh, we have now an abstract concept. So, bar, in the sense of a musical notation, is a hyponym of a notational system, which is a hyponym of a written communication, and so on, all the way to abstraction. So, that takes us to another root node in the WordNet forest. And let's uh, briefly look at some other examples. Sense 5 takes us to entity. Sense 6 takes us to an act, human action or human activity. 7 is, again, an abstraction. 8 goes to entity, and 9 goes to group or grouping, and 10 goes back to entity something. Some other properties of words in WordNet include familiarity and polysemy. This slide is going to show examples of both. The left-hand side of the slide shows you the familiarity of certain words, and the right-hand side shows you their polysemy. Polysemy, as the name indicates, means number of senses. Poly means many, semi means senses. So the polysemic count of the word board used as a noun is nine. For bar earlier, it was 10 or 11. Now, for familiarity, the word board used as a noun is familiar. So that's a very common category. The other categories available are common and uncommon and also rare and very rare. So the word serendipity, for example, is very rare. Now, one thing that you may notice uh, based on this example, which is also true in general, is that more common words are also more familiar and also have more senses. Like an example here, the word board is very familiar and it also has a high polysemic count. So there are other lexical networks in addition to WordNet that I want to bring up. Uh, here's a sampling of those. Euro WordNet has multiple European languages such as Spanish and French and German. And I would like to emphasize that there exist many, uh, including many open source uh, external thesauri or language resources that can be used in natural language processing in ways uh, similar to WordNet and uh, different databases that can be incorporated in natural language systems. For example, Open Thesaurus, Freebase, uh, DBpedia, BabelNet, and various thesauri. And in case you're wondering what thesauri means, it's the plural of thesaurus. And thesaurus is just a special kind of dictionary that tells you which words are similar or related to other words. So here's an example of BabelNet or BabelNet. Uh, this is for the word song. As you can see, it tells you in the different languages what are the usages of this word. And it contains links to definitions of that word in multiple languages. Mesh is another interesting uh, hierarchy of concepts. It's used in the medical literature. Mesh uh, does stand for medical subject headings. And it includes uh, concepts such as diseases, drugs, body parts, uh, sera, and so on. And the link uh, at the bottom shows you how you can access MeSH. MeSH can be freely downloaded and uh, is used a lot in the biomedical natural language processing community. So this concludes the section on WordNet and related lexical networks. We're going to continue in a moment with the next section, which is on uh, thesaurus-based word similarity methods.